Apple's product design is legendary in the industry for innovation, creativity, and imagination. But it's often the more glamorous products such as the MacBooks, iPhones, and iPods that get all the attention. With this in mind, we thought we'd take a look at one of Apple's earliest input devices, the mouse, to see how the design has changed from the early 80s. So here is the history of Apple mice. A year before the Macintosh was released, Apple's Lisa introduced the concept of a graphical user interface in mouse to Apple's customers. The mouse created for the Apple Lisa was among the first commercial mice sold in the marketplace. Included with the Lisa system in 1983, it was based on the mouse used in the 1970s on the Alto computer at Xerox Park. Unique to this mouse was the use of a steel ball instead of the usual rubber found in subsequent mice. It connected to the computer by a standard DE9 and unique squeeze-release connector. Though developed by Apple, it was actually designed by an outside firm, Hovey Kelly, who built hundreds of prototypes and conducted exhaustive testing with focus groups in order to create the perfect device. Their perseverance paid off since not only did they bring the design in on time and on budget, but the resulting device remained virtually unchanged for almost 20 years. Every single aspect of the mouse was researched and developed, from how many buttons to include, to how loud the click should be. The original case design was Bill Dresselhaus's and took on an almost Art Deco style with formal curved lines to match the Lisa. The Macintosh mouse was little changed from the original Lisa version and is completely interchangeable. The case was a slightly darker brown than Lisa's beige coloring, and it had less formal lines, with a thick chamfer around its edges to match the Macintosh case. Mechanically, the Lisa's steel ball was replaced by a rubber-covered steel ball, but otherwise connected with the same DE9 connectors, though updated with a square shape and standard thumb screws. When the Macintosh Plus debuted in 1986, Apple had made minor revisions to the mouse mechanism across all product lines. They unified the cable connectors and used a more rounded shape. The following year, Apple once again unified its product lines by adopting a uniform platinum gray color for all its products. In 1987, this mouse had its final design change, updating both its color to platinum with contrasting dark gray smoke accents and minor mechanism changes. Four months after the Macintosh debut, the Apple IIc was introduced with the addition of an optional mouse to manipulate standard 80 column text. The mouse was similar to the Macintosh mouse, though it was a creamy beige color that coordinated with the 2C's bright off-white case and had a slightly modified design which was sleeker than the Macintosh's blockier shape. Also, the entire body was one uniform color, moving away from the Mac and Lisa style mouse, which featured contrasting accents on the button and cable. Unlike the Macintosh, the 2C mouse shared a dual purpose port with gaming accessories like joysticks. In order for the 2C mouse to recognize what was connected, it sent a signal through the dual purpose port which allowed various accessories to be identified. Despite these differences, it carried exactly the same model number as the Macintosh mouse, and in 1988, it adopted the same physical appearance and coloring as a platinum gray Macintosh mouse. Unlike its predecessors, the 1988 Macintosh mouse was compatible with the Apple IIc. As a result, Apple briefly sold the intermediate model of the Apple mouse for use across all platforms. In September 1986, Apple continued a year of major change by converting its mice and keyboards to the Apple Desktop Bus. Newly redesigned, this mouse retained the blocky footprint of its predecessor, but had a lower, triangular profile. The first official Snow White design language mouse, it was a uniform platinum gray color, included the single button with only the cables and connectors retaining the contrasting darker gray smoke color. It was introduced on the Apple II GS computer and later became the standard included mouse with all Macintosh desktop computers for the next six years.
In only its third major redesign in 10 years, the Apple mouse shed its blocky exterior for rounded curves. The so-called teardrop mouse was essentially the same as its predecessor, but with a new case subsequently considered the ideal shape of mice. The basic design persevered through the years and was widely adopted by other mouse manufacturers. It was included with all Macintosh desktop computers from 1993 until 1998. It was also the first mouse produced by Apple in black to match the Macintosh TV as well as the Performa 5420. The Apple USB mouse was Apple's first mouse that connected to the computer through its USB port. Released with the iMac in 1998 and included with all successive desktop Macs for the next two years, the round hockey puck USB mouse is widely considered one of Apple's biggest failures. Marking the switch from Apple desktop mouse, the colorful translucent mouse was a radical departure from its predecessors down to a ball whose two-tone surface fluttered past the user's eyes as it spun under the mouse's translucent housing. However stylish, the mouse's round shape is widely considered clumsy due to its small size and tendency to rotate in use. This was a major cause for the success of the Griffin iMate ADB to USB adapters, as they allowed for the use of the older, more comfortable ADB Mouse 2 to be used with those iMacs. Later revisions included a shallow indentation on the front of the mouse button, but this was not enough to prevent a flood of third-party products like the iCatch and Unitrap, shells that attached to the USB mouse to give it the Apple desktop mouse's elliptical shape. Another flaw introduced in the USB mouse, shared across all of Apple's USB offerings, is an unusually short cord. Though intended for use through the integrated hub in Apple's keyboards, which themselves had shorter cables since the USB transition, eventually prompting Apple to bundle keyboard-only USB extension cables with the Mac Towers, Apple's transition to USB coincided with the relocation of ports on their laptops from the center to the left edge. Since none of Apple's USB mice had cords longer than two feet, they were considered impractical for most users. In a move away from the bold colors of the iMac and a return to the styling of the traditional mouse, Apple discontinued the USB mouse and introduced the all-black Pro Mouse in 2000. A similar design to the Apple Desktop Mouse 2, the black Apple Pro Mouse was surrounded by a clear plastic shell. After years of criticism of their one-button mouse never adopting two buttons, Apple effectively flipped the design of a standard mouse upside down, with a sleek, seamless appearance that inspired its title as the first zero-button mouse. This was the first Apple mouse to use an LED for optical tracking instead of a rubber ball. It was included as the standard mouse with all desktop Macs and was later made available in white. However, in 2003 it underwent a minor redesign, during which time the black version was discontinued and Pro was dropped from its name. In 2005, for the first time in its 22 years of making mice, Apple shipped a model with two buttons. Instead of using physical mechanisms, the Mighty Mouse featured touch-sensitive buttons. Like the Pro Mouse before it, the body of the mouse would respond to the click. On the top, a free-spinning trackball allowed users to scroll in any direction. Over time, many users discovered that this ball would accumulate grime, rendering it useless without frequent cleaning. Two touch-sensitive areas on the side of the body could be squeezed for additional input. OS X was the only operating system to fully support the Mighty Mouse. In 2006, Apple added a Bluetooth model to the lineup, eventually replacing the wired version completely. One year later, Apple revamped the mouse, changing the size of the mouse to the same white color as the top, ditching the gray. On October 20th, 2009, Apple was forced to rename the Mighty Mouse to the Apple Mouse due to legal issues regarding the name. Introduced on October 20th, 2009 as a replacement to the wireless Mighty Mouse, the Magic Mouse featured wireless Bluetooth capabilities, laser tracking, and multi-touch gesture controls similar to those found on the iPhone and on the MacBook's trackpad. The Magic Mouse was included with the iMac, however the wired Mighty Mouse, renamed Apple Mouse, was still available as an option when buying. 
On October 13th, 2015, Apple released a second generation Magic Mouse that charges via a lightning connector. However, the lightning connector port was located on the bottom of the mouse, which means that it couldn't be used while charging, a design choice that received criticism from the Apple community. The Magic Trackpad brought Apple's critically acclaimed multi-touch trackpad technology to desktops. Announced on July 27, 2010, it was similar to the trackpads found on MacBooks except 80% larger. It connected via Bluetooth and ran on two AA batteries. The trackpad was designed to accompany Apple's wireless keyboard by adopting the same aluminum design and sitting flush with the keyboard. Additionally, the entire trackpad could be clipped. Pressing on the surface applied pressure to the circular rubber feet on the bottom of the trackpad, registering a click. At $69, initial reviews of the trackpad lauded its design, but not its price. In October of 2015, Apple introduced the updated Magic Trackpad 2. It featured an even larger touch surface, a rechargeable battery, and forced touch. It had a low-profile design and sold for $129.